more and more institutions, more and more parts of our lives are being taken over by those woke people. For example, publishers are now going through ancient books, Agatha Christie, revising them so no one would be offended. Howard Levin is a well-known employment lawyer, and he has some good common sense. He joins me right now because I want to ask you, what is the impetus to this? It seems like whether it's a beer commercial or a book or somebody who says, nah, 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 and they're being outlawed by society. A little bit ago, a couple of years ago, I was hearing about microaggressions. People were saying something. They weren't actually aggressive, but someone might take it the wrong way. Yeah. And I thought it was just ridiculous. And of course, that's now expanded into you can't be offended. But what happens if people are sufficiently coddled, get into the real world and get punched a few times in the mouth and then see how you do well, if no, you've never well, been we punched have to before. protect people from being right, punched exactly. in the mouth. So you don't want anybody coming to a university of free thought and free th speech who's going to offend any one of those kids. What was, what, what, was it Joe Fraser who said you could have all the game plans in the world to get punched the most when you're in the ring? I mean, the reality is, once you're out there, too much coddling is destructive. Or is Eddie Greenspan... Oh, I, I agree with you, but it seems that it started in universities and schools, but now it's everywhere. You know, whether you're working for a bank or a, certainly a university or working for big institutions, they don't want you to be hurt. They're doing everything possible. Like, what is going on? Are we all turning into softies? Well, Stephen, diversity, equity, and inclusion programs in most Canadian companies right now prevent you from saying anything politically incorrect, as is perceived by the heads of the DEI, which are usually pretty left-wing. We and couldn't have this conversation if you and I worked for a large international firm. No, we'd be fired. Yeah. And, and lots of law firms would be fired or asked to not say it again or you will be so fired. So why are these institutions and law firms taken up with this? Why are, they, why are they being sucked in by it? It started in the universities and the school system and I don't really understand how it's got so powerful so fast because most Canadians and Americans think it's ridiculous. Oppose it. But, but that's true. Most people in Buckhorn, people I talk to say, this is baloney. What's yes. going on? So why are the leaders of our society being sucked up by that? Because the upper middle class is generally in favor of it. In the same way, the Liberal Party has become so woke. The natural governing party. Yeah. They're so, and the NDP, of course, are just as woke. They're so woke, and yet they keep getting elected. But that's, I think, the same reason why Justin's losing a lot of his support, because people are resisting. And that's the best thing the Republicans have going for them, the Democrats being so woke, starting with the squad, but the rest of them too. But then if you're not woke, oh, as Trudeau and his friends would say, you're being followed, you're being like Trump. <laughs> right. It's a nice, easy put down, isn't it? It's entirely ludicrous, but they just tar you as being regressive and aggressive and not sufficiently conscious. Howard Levitt, he was tarred just like me. Thanks very much. Three minutes. Justin Trudeau is now on the record as saying that social media is destabilizing and he wants to bring in censorship to determine what can be put on and not on social media. That is wrong. Please support this station and please add your address so I can write you a letter and thank you for supporting freedom of speech.